video is brought to you by Let Synthesize Academy, the number one place for practice-oriented courses for serious music producers. Hey, the last one here. Welcome to the new Synthesize Sunday episode. And today I want to give you a few tips on how to pick the best sample for your song through this little groove I made. So like always you can download this whole project from my Patreon below and if you want to dig deeper into production click here for my academy for very cool start to finish master classes and right now let's jump into it. Alright so this is the drums. And as you can see I loaded up several snares because this is the main one. Nice and punchy and cut through the mix very heavily, it has lots of presence. So, when we talk about snares and how to pick your favorite snare, I mean not your favorite snare, you already know what your favorite snare is, but the snare that fits to your song the best. So, the first and the most obvious one, use your ears. I know, don't hate me, but yeah, this is the truth. So, let me tell you that, you know, I've been producing full time for more than 10 years now. And, you know, when I have a groove or something, and I go to my folder and start browsing my snares. You know, stuff like that. A trained ear can very easily pick the one that fits the musical surrounding the best. Because, you know, you hear what the music, the basses, the synths need from the snare to cut through the mix. And that is very important, you know, not all of the snares, not every snare will cut through the mix well. You can sidechain or you can use the biggest magic software, mixing software, it will just not work if the snare is not good for your purpose. And you know, when your ears are trained, you can easily pick the one that will fit well to the mix. Because you hear the spectrum of the frequencies that the snare has and how will this will transform to your mix. I can't tell you big secrets how to do that without, you know, using your ears. That is the most important part here, but of course we have some points. The snare contains three parts, the bottom part, the tail and the transient. So obviously the tail and the transient is basically the top end, so you need to be careful for that. But let's talk about the mid bass now. So as you can see this snare has very few low end or mid bass energy, but in this case it is not a big problem. because it has enough mid-bass energy to cut through the mix. So obviously you don't want to go very crazy, you don't want to go too low, from a good snare, a good acoustic snare, should be fine here. Let's switch a snare drum. So as you can hear, this snare drum has lot more mid-bass energy. Let me show it to you on the utility tool, I mean on the spectral analyzer. So at around 170 Hz, it has a very, very huge peak. Now this is a very heavy snare and the middle bass energy can be this great or just can be a really light, like on the previous snare. Because if your musical surroundings, even the basses are very, very heavy, you know, with lots of distortion, lots of mid bass energy, you really want to compensate that stuff with very, very a strong low end on the snare. This is not a rule, you can go to a completely different direction, but I experienced that, you know, you need to use a very heavy snare when you have very heavy basses. Now in this particular example, my bass is it is not very heavy, it's just a filtered, slightly distorted bass sequence, so it doesn't really need that very heavy, very aggressive punch on the snare. Obviously you can, do, you can use that if you want, but somehow I feel that it just won't fit in the musical surrounding, it just won't fit to the other sounds. So this is why I think the original snare, this one, is a lot better idea to use. Now let's go to a different one. So this snare is cool again, it has a little mid bass energy, but somehow, you know, the other frequencies are not the best. So I'm not a big fan of using this snare drum. Let me use one more. And I think you instantly hear that it is not good. So middle presence is another very important thing that you need to consider when picking the right snare. Let me go back to this example. 
it does not have very huge middle presence actually because it's just a snare with slight low end and very heavy top end so as you can see the top end is very heavy but let's choose a snare that has huge middle presence and that is that clangy layer on the snare now obviously if your mix is very empty it can be a good idea to use a middle presence snare again it is very personal it really depends on your personal preference but this snare can be a good idea to use now with this little example that i'm showing you with this little groove i still miss the punch you know the very heavy high presence and some little more mid low or low presence from the snare because for me it's just too too heavy on the middles and i want a little more a little wider spectrum on the snare to hit a little harder but honestly this can be another good snare for this groove i think simply because the mix is very empty in the middles let's choose a different one this has no middle presence at all this neither not at all this has a little more middle presence, but it's so short, it's just unusable. Okay, so this is not good. Top presence is a very important part again. <laughs> Everything is important what I'm talking about. Because snares can be very loud if the top presence or the high frequency presence is huge. Let me show you what I mean. So in this particular snare, you can see that this middle high energy at around 8, well, we can go down to 4 and go up to about 10k is very very huge and this is why it is very very sensible for the ear to listen to so this is why you will hear that snare sounding very very loud and this is actually not a bad idea but again you need to match the snare for, to the tops and the other instruments that your groove has but if i go to a different one this thing has not very heavy middle high frequency presence this snare has a lot more high frequency presence but in overall the composition of the snare is not very good for for our purpose actually in other songs it could be very great because the top is not very heavy on the middle top frequencies but more like on the higher part of the frequencies making a, a high heavy kind of sound so let me use an eq and drop an eq8 after this snare and just let me modify the midi so it will be a lot easier to work with so to fix this i would chop off the very very highs a little where the frequencies the very high frequencies are dominating and boost the mid high frequency at around 7k or 6 i don't know let's see So it instantly turned a lot louder because you hear that it is louder simply because of the frequencies that i just boosted you know the ear is very very sensible for these frequencies you know everything we are talking about the mid the low the high presence is a compact thing because you need to think in a system where everything correlates to each other so don't just take one and work on that you need to think how the low end compares to the top how the mid compares to the top because you know a snare is a is a complex thing another very important part is how your snare compares to the kick so let me show you again this example that i'm working in now the kick and the snare relationship is not very bad uh, if i want to use this snare but i want to choose a different one this one So what I mean is the kick, especially the high frequencies of the kick, the transient and the little noise on the kick is very similar that I can hear in the snare. You know, not very harsh frequencies, high, not very harsh high frequencies on the kick and on the snare. The mid-high frequencies are a little more boosted all, again on the kick and the snare too. So this is why I feel that these two sounds, the kick and the snare, are working a lot better together. But my original snare works a lot better with the other sounds in the mix 
It doesn't mean that the relationship between the kick and the snare is bad, but again, it is a very important part to match these two sounds so they work well together. If you think about it, it is very obvious that the length of the snare is very important. For example, let's just take a drum and bass song. You can't really use a very huge, a very long snare because it just won't have time to play from the start to the end because everything is so fast. But in a half-time drum and bass song, a very long snare can be a good idea. So this is why if we go to this snare, it's so funny because it's just a peak, really. It doesn't feel like a real snare, but if you use it in a drum and bass song, it can be a very different idea, a very different feel. It's very different, it almost works. Especially if I add the tops, I mean the hi-hats. But in half time, it just doesn't work. So this is why I would go with a lot longer snare. This is not very great. This can work too. This can work too. And honestly, the original snare can work too. Now, the snare itself is not very long, but it has a, a clap on it with a huge reverb. So this is why it is good. And the final thing is the instrumental surroundings. I already covered that with the previous topics, but I know that you understand how important it is. So if you use very harsh sound, uh, a muffled snare just won't make it. So in this example, the musical surrounding is a little different than the snare itself because the snare is very harsh. Um, not very, but it's harsh. But the sound themselves in the mix are a little muffled, so they don't have very harsh frequencies and they're not aggressive. They don't really have too much distortion on them. But if you think about it, with a lot less high frequencies, it can work too. I think this is even better. So cutting at around, I don't know, like 12k. It, it sounds a lot better. But again, this is personal. I really like how harsh it is and how snappy, you know, it just hurts the ears a little. But again, if you like it differently, I think this is even better. So these were my tips. I hope they helped you a lot. And don't forget to train your ears. This is the most important part of this process. And if you want to download this project, check my Patreon below and go check Academy. Let's synthesize Academy for awesome start to finish classes like Nausea Neuro Masterclass, Jorai Bass House Masterclass and stuff like that. They are awesome. The reviews are very cool. So see you guys next time. Peace.